Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody is well today. I've got an interesting article for you from the Channel 4 News which is here in the UK and the article headline is this. Call for police to get mandatory neurodiversity training after officer assaulted young autistic boy in school. So I'm going to read the article and then I will give my thoughts towards the end of this video. So let's get into it. The family of an autistic child who was assaulted by a police officer in school have called for officers to receive mandatory training on how to deal with children with similar conditions. In the CCTV footage obtained by Channel 4 News, a police officer is seen threatening to hit a 10-year-old boy who is laying on the ground, then he grabs him and drags him along the floor. A Home Office spokesperson has said they continue to work closely across government on a national neurodiversity strategy PC Christopher Cruz, who is the policeman at fault in this case, PC Christopher Cruz, who was an officer who was stationed at the boys' school in Merseyside, was convicted of assault after a trial at Crewe Magistrates Court and fined. He tried to appeal this verdict at the Crown Court, but this was shortly rejected. Cruz faced a Merseyside police misconduct hearing last month when it was determined that his actions amounted to gross misconduct. The hearing was told that after assaulting the boy, Cruz walked back into the classroom and said to the other students, can you hear the 10-year-old boy crying? And he pointed to the children in the classroom and said, you're next. The hearing was also told that a teacher at the school, that Cruz was trying to intimidate him to try and prevent him reporting the assault during a conversation later on that same day. The hearing panel decided that the officer's actions were so serious that he would have been automatically dismissed from the police force had he not retired shortly after the incident. His name will also be placed onto the College of Policing barred list. Merseyside Police say, since this case, all the officers based in schools have been giving extra training, but that's not the case in, in, that's not the case in all forces, and there is no legal obligation or requirement to do this. Detective Superintendent Cheryl Rhodes from the Forces Professional Standards Department has said, the actions of this officer are not reflective of the behaviour or standards of our school officers who do a fantastic job day in and day out. The neurodiversity within the criminal justice system review has highlighted training as a significant gap with most staff reporting little or no training. In the police and probation services, only 28% of staff surveyed for the review said that they have begun any training on neurodiversity, while prison staff this falls down to 24%. The review says specialist training should be developed and delivered to staff working within the criminal justice system, including mandatory training for all frontline staff. Justice Secretary Robert Buckland has said, I ask for this review because all too often I have seen people with conditions such as autism, dyslexia struggle to navigate a justice system that doesn't know how to best to simply help them. The findings mark a turning point in how we steer these people out of crime. And I'll set out a strategy shortly of how we improve support later this year. Ultimately, we'll have safer street, streets and fewer victims. So, what are my thoughts as an autistic adult or an autistic woman, I hear you ask? Well, let's get into it. This story has horrified me but on, beyond belief that this young boy with autism and special needs is being mistreated by the authority that is meant to protect him. The fact that this officer is seen dragging him is beyond accept unacceptable. And especially for somebody with autism, you should never touch them as this is a sensory trigger and the fact that the boy is also a minor. So again, this is abuse of a vulnerable minor person. I am saddened that this type of abuse is still happening to vulnerable people and people with special needs such as autism. It still shows that the police and criminal justice system are lacking the appropriate training or support on neurodiversity and disability and within mental health. But I am glad to see that the officer in question has now been convicted of assault after a trial and fined. As the damage that he has done to the boy and his family is just totally unforgivable and will affect the boy for the rest of his life and his family. I find it sickening that he was allowed to appeal even his conviction, but glad that the appeal got rejected. His actions are considered to be so serious that he was automatically dismissed from the police force, but shortly decided to retire after the incident. I am glad that, to know that his name will be placed on the Forever College of Policing Barred List. This does make me wonder how many police or people in the criminal justice system are guilty of having no training and abusing the, their position and vulnerable people. I must state again that not all police or criminal justice system 
professionals are bad people. This just happens to be one bad person out of the bunch who abused their position and their authority and, and their safety to look after minors and people with disabilities. So what more could we do to make police training in future with regards to disability better? Well, I'm glad that you ask. By asking our local police officers or criminal justice system or probation officers to bring in disabled people such as myself and people who have personal lived experiences of the criminal justice system to better understand their conditions such as autism, ADHD, other conditions that people and police will be able to successfully communicate better and we can help all police officers to better understand how to communicate with people with disabilities who may interact with the criminal justice system. I stress again, not all police are bad people. This was just one bad guy that didn't know what he was doing, abused a minor, abused someone who was severely disabled or is severely disabled and didn't know the best way to act to support him. This incident happened due to a lack of judgment and professional misconduct and the fact that he even touched the boy in question should never have happened. As a result, this police officer has now been suspended permanently from any police forces within the country across the UK. This should never have happened. Again, it's down to misconduct. Again, it's down to lack of training. He clearly didn't know how to support the boy. He was in a meltdown and the boy was beyond functionability was beyond being able to talk to him and imagine having the police in your face at the first point having someone in your face yelling at you and screeching and trying to pull you and touch you and you're overstimulated it's not going to work so i just got to talk about this from an autistic standpoint this is disgusting this story is horrifying it sickens me to my core that this guy should not have been working in a special needs school this guy should have been put out of there months ago the the fact that this guy has tried claiming his innocence is just beyond a joke. You have been convicted. You should never have abused a disabled person in your care. What were you thinking? This proves that police, probation, any frontline services that deal with autistic people, people with disabilities, people with learning difficulties, people with mental health issues, need to have better training by people with lived experience. How many more times can I stress this? Let's get our police, our probation, our NHS, our dentists, our doctors, any kind of medical frontline stuff that deal with people with disabilities need to be better trained to, to enable better communication. The more that we interact with them and we, the more that we train them, the more we get them involved in our communities, the less likely situations like this will happen. It just makes me want to scream. It shouldn't happen. This is happening far too common. This is something that makes me extremely worried because who's gonna, what's going to happen next? Is this going to be another autistic person? Someone who's more vulnerable? Someone with ADHD? Well, is this going to continue to happen? Am I going to read more and more and more and more and more so stories about this kind of thing? So, yeah, let me know what you feel below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Again, I will link the video down below as well. There is a video of the instance so you can watch it. I don't want to attach it to this video because of copyright issues but please give me a thumbs up like comment share and subscribe and i will see you soon guys Mwah. bye